So here's an example of a surface integral which um, we want to compute. So we want to compute the double integral over the surface S, which is given by this portion of a cone of this integrand. And so let's let's see what this looks like. So the cone, first of all, I'm going to sketch the region up here. The cone is a cone that opens in the y direction, as you can tell by this formula, y equals the square root of x squared plus z squared. And so the cone kind of looks like this, and it only it goes from zero to five, so it starts here at the origin, the the vertex of the cone, and it goes out to y equal five. And remember, this is a surface integral, so it's just the surface of the cone that we're concerned with. All right, and so we need to try to parameterize this cone if we're gonna if we're gonna use this process here. So let's take a look at this thing. This cone all sits above. If we were to project this back. Right? If we were to project this outer circle back to the xz plane, it all sits over a circle in the xz plane of radius 5, actually. Right? Radius 5. So this is radius of 5. And how do we know that? Well, in polar coordinates in the xz plane, if we go out in the x direction, and then we allow ourselves to rotate this way as theta, this is r, then this equation just says that y is equal to r. So this is actually cylindrical coordinates where the y is fixed and the polar coordinates happen in the xz plane, but y is equal to r, okay? And then what's gonna happen here, right? Well, um, our function in the Uh, parameter domain here, how's it going to work? Well, it's going to take our our r is just going to take the little r, so the radius r and the theta, and it's going to go from 0 to 5 in the r direction. It's going to trace out this much, right? And as it does so, it's going to go out this arm, and then it's going to rotate around, right? So it's going to rotate this around, and we get this process here, right? So the way that I've drawn this actually probably the r should go out the z direction and then theta should be positive this way, right? Um, but that's okay, so, so this is 2 pi. All right, and we need to be able to write down a formula for this thing. So we know that in these coordinates, x and z now are given by the polar coordinates and y is just gonna be given by r. Y is just gonna be equal to r here. So r with a hat as a function of r and theta as a vector function. The x direction is gonna be, um, again, the orientation down here doesn't really matter, but if we go out this way first, then actually the x is r uh, sine of theta. All right, the y is just gonna be r in cylindrical coordinates, and then the z is gonna be r cosine of theta. And that's, again, because we want this to open in the positive orientation so that it obeys the right hand rule and that the y is actually positive here. Um, if you switch these, you'll get the same answer, I believe, because we're gonna have to compute the surface area element here. Um, and yeah, let's, let's see what happens. So we need to do that next, right? The surface area element nu of r and theta, that's just equal to r sub r cross with r sub theta. And we need to compute these, right? So r sub r is going to be sine of theta, 1, cosine of theta, crossed with uh, r sub theta. So that's going to be r cosine of theta, 0, uh, minus r sine of theta. And we need to take the cross product of these two. And so the cross product is going to be negative r sine of theta. And then the next component is going to be uh, when we zero out the middle one. So this one's going to be negative r sine squared minus r cosine squared minus all that. So this is positive r. So you can work this out, but that should just be r. And then the third component is just going to be negative r cosine of theta. And remember, when we integrate all this up, we need to know the length of nu. And so the length of nu is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares. So this is r squared sine squared theta plus r squared plus r squared cosine squared theta. So this is the square root of 2r squared, which is the square root of 2 times r. Okay, so that's the surface area element here, square root of 2 times r. 
And now we need to integrate all this up. So all this tells us is that our ds is going to be this. It's going to be square root of 2 r dr d theta. This is a rectangle here in our parameter domain. And then we need to swap out these terms, right, and then just integrate it up. And we've got our domain right here as a rectangle, so we're ready to go. So this tells us then double integral over s of y squared z squared ds. This is going to be equal to integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 5 of y squared, that's just r squared, z squared, that is r squared times, go back to our z, r squared times cosine squared theta times uh, ds, ds is all this, right? So square root 2 times r dr d theta. And then we just have to work this out. So square root of 2 can come out. This integral is separable. The integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine squared theta d theta times the integral from 0 to 5 of r to the fifth dr. Okay. Um, this requires a uh, change, so a trig identity, right? Power reducing or double angle formula. It's got different names, or at least I call it different names. So this becomes square root of 2 over 2, uh, integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, d theta. Uh, this part, by the way, is gone at this point. Cosine of 2 theta. It's not gone. It's going to be 0 because you're integrating from 0 to 2 pi, and those are the same point here. And then this one, so in other words, this integral is just equal to 2 pi, right? And then this one is going to be 1 sixth times uh, 5 to the 6th power. All right, and again, this one's 2 pi, so we get root 2 over 2 times 2 pi times 1 over 6 times 5 to the 6th power, and this just simplifies to, what, 5 to the 6th power times pi over 6. So, using a calculator... I know, breaks all my favorite rules, right? This becomes 15,625 pi divided by 6. And there's the value of our surface integral.